All right, guys, welcome to another episode. This is William Garrido, and I'm going to be talking about another topic brought up by one of the followers and also a friend of mine and club member. Uh, Stephanie, thank you for the topic. The topic is revolving loose dogs in your neighborhood. So she sent me a picture or a picture slash article of this loose dog in her area, in her town, um, San Angelo. These two loose dogs apparently uh, that uh, got into somebody's property and injured a couple of goats and possibly killed one of the goats. Something along those lines. I don't. I don't remember the exact details, but basically, loose dogs causing severe injury or death to another animal, um, potentially being a ha- a hazard and a hassle for people and you know their kids and people walking their dogs. So the uh, you know the the thing that Stephanie brought up is. When she walks her dog, it makes her nervous, right? or she she's not um, she's not one hundred percent comfortable because apparently this happens pretty pretty often in that area. There are loose dogs, and I'm very very aware, very familiar with that feeling too, because I used to live in a town, Wimberley, uh, next to Wimberley, actually Fisher. Uh, that's in the. Uh, uh, San Antonio, San Marcos uh, area, right around that area, and Fisher was pretty pretty small area town, I guess. And at the time when we lived there, and this is also when I was when I was operating our uh, our dog training business in that area, we saw loose dogs pretty. Pretty often, the the area. I mean, we even had a a couple of packs, just groups of dogs that would just stick to one area. They didn't overlap. They had their own little group, and then there were like two groups, and they would just kind of roam the the neighborhood, so to speak. The area. It wasn't really a neighborhood. There was a lot of a lot of property. A lot of uh just um, a lot of trees is the hill country so not many houses in that area but yeah we saw that periodically and even when i went for walks i have this on on a on an episode i forget what the episode is but even on a on a couple of occasions we ran into it when i was walking a dog my dog and I was going for, I mean, and this has happened to me a handful of times actually where somebody's loose dog came charging at us. And then I had another instance in which I was walking a client dog and I had my son, my son at the time was, I forget how old he was, but he was, he was younger. Like he was a, a, a small kid and he was walking our dog, Jax, who's very well trained at that time. So we weren't really concerned about Jax and Jax being handled by my son. And uh, in one of those instances, we saw a group, a pack of dogs just charging at us. Just charging, just pissed off. And I have this client dog, and I see them from a distance. And I have this little kid next to me. And um I I knew when that was when I saw that, I knew there was no way I was going to outrun. My son and I were not going to outrun that pack. Just not gonna happen. So I, I quickly looked at my options. Option one, run away, but that wasn't gonna help. I knew that was that was out of the question. But it was an option, but not a good option. Option two stand still but the problem with that is i have a little kid and i could tell my kid hey just stand still and be cool but he's he's very young at the time plus i have two dogs with me right although i'm not too concerned about jacks i I am but not as concerned as as i am about the client dog 
yeah, I don't know if he's been in a situation like this before. I don't think he he had. And um, so that wasn't that wasn't a good option either. And I'm thinking about this as these dog, uh, this pack of dogs is charging at us. So I thought of options, the a third option. The third option was kind of a gamble, but I knew this could work. And uh, and I have a chance. There's a chance, and I'm thinking about this very quickly. Yes, th- that sounds crazy, but it does. I mean, it, it was happening very quickly. These dogs were far enough where I had time. I mean, they were closing in, but I had time to see this. This was again. There's not many houses here. It's just just the hill country with, with uh, some roads. So the other option was basically do a courage test just charge at at the dog so i i decided to go for that if it worked it was going to work if it didn't work then it wasn't going to work but the other two options were not going to work either so it was one of those things if we're going to go down we're going to go down swinging so uh, i tell my son you know very young so he's very trusting you know he doesn't have a whole lot of uh you know life experience at the time so he's very very trusting and i and i tell him hey diego I want to do something cool, and uh, and I and I have this tone right before he gets nervous at, at these dogs charging at us. And he's like, "Yeah, yeah," <laughs> and I'm like, okay. We're gonna play this really cool game, and I was like, "On the count of three, we're going to scream, and we're gonna run at those dogs." Ready? And I'm you know I'm I'm keeping my my cool and I'm being very excitable about this. Like we're gonna play a game. And I'm trying to keep it this way because I have a little kid. And he's like, okay. I'm like, all right. And these dogs are still closing in. I'm like, one, two, three. And we both just screamed, right? Like, we're just screaming. Imagine a, a, a if you see PSA 1, a, a PSA 1 courage test. That's basically what it was like. Minus the clatter stick, minus the bite suit. Minus the the accessory being thrown at the dog. So on the count of three, right? One, two, three. And we screamed. And I and I inside I'm I'm crossing my fingers. I'm like, God, I hope this works. So I have this little kid here. I I, I don't want anything to happen to him. So we start screaming. He follows my lead and we're like, ah, just start screaming and charging at the dogs, at this group of dogs. And it worked. These dogs instantly hit the brakes like you saw them hit the brakes turn around and start running away and uh, it was a it was a successful experiment and uh, i'm glad it worked out but i knew i know most dogs are not when when faced with with a situation like that most dogs are I don't. I don't want to say this and uh, and give you the listener the wrong idea because I don't. Want, I'm not saying you should try this. If you have the option to wait, stand still, or just calmly walk away, you need to assess what's best for you. I'm not telling you how to handle yourself. You need to be very aware of that. I'm just telling you a story that relates to this episode. I decided to do that because I knew the other two options were not going to work. I got lucky and it worked out because. I know based on me working with dogs, a lot of dogs, most dogs don't see that. Most dogs don't see people charging and screaming at them. So I was, I had that, I had that in my, on my side. Now that could have gone wrong, but the other two options didn't look good either. At least this one, there was a chance of success. So I, I felt like I had my back against the wall. And I made that decision. Okay, most, most, most of the time, you're not gonna find yourself with your little kid and you know, and two dogs. That's not normally how it works. I have found myself with just one dog, and I'm walking the dog, and I see a loose dog charging at me. Okay, the way I handle that is I just keep walking. But it just so happens that I have a well-behaved dog when I do this. So they, you know, um. By by this point, they have pretty decent training. The times that this has happened to me, the dog was already pretty well trained. So we just kept on trucking, and the dog that was charging at us just eventually stopped charging. 
Okay, now at the time I was thinking, crap, this is going to turn into a dog fight. We just kept walking, kept moving along, and the dog just left us alone. And this has happened to me a few times. But this time with this pack of dogs, this was pretty scary. And and I made a, I made a decision that just worked out. I don't know what would have happened if I had if we had just stood still. I know my son would have gotten freaked out. Um, if we had walked away, I don't know what would have happened. I just know those dogs were pissed. So one, people should be really responsible and not leave their dogs loose outside. I know sometimes they get loose. It happens. Okay, I understand dogs sometimes get loose. We don't like it when that happens, but when that happens. It's usually an accident and people are freaking out because their dog, their pet is loose. So sometimes it's not necessarily that they were irresponsible. It just happened to them. Now, it shouldn't happen very often. It happens very often. You need to address whatever is allowing this to happen. But um, that's usually not the case, right? People are usually pretty responsible, usually pretty responsible, but um, if they're not, like if, if you don't have a fence line and you just have your dog loose without supervision, it's going to happen. Your dog is going to get loose. It's going to get distracted, especially if it's intact. Uh, now they're, they're more willing to explore. So we have to be very careful because your dog might be a sweet, sweet angel at home with you. But it might be a nightmare, a terror to somebody else that could be walking with their dog, their child, or just by themselves. Dogs can be, loose dogs can be a, an extreme hassle. And they could be a hazard to themselves, a hazard to other people and other animals, clearly. Right? I mean, this does happen. This Dogs do get loose and they kill farm animals. I've heard of people that, I've known people not that I've heard, I've known people that their dogs would get loose and then when they would come back, they would like try to look for them and they, when they finally would find their dogs, their dogs had blood all over them. And so the owner would be like, oh my God, what happened to you? They clean their dogs, they inspect their dogs and there isn't a single cut, a single scratch on the dog. Well, where do you think the blood came from? They bathe the dog, they clean the dog, they inspected the dog, not a single scratch on that dog. Where do you think that blood came from? Who knows? Like, who knows? Who knows? She, This person at the time, she, when she told me about this, she's like, I have no idea where that came from. I, I have no idea what that could have been from. It could have been another dog. It could have been a farm animal. It could have been a person. You don't know. So, yes, I know sometimes it does happen, but you need to really be careful. You need to know what kind of dog you have, and you need to be very aware that animals are going to be animals. Dogs are going to be dogs. You just have to make sure that you, you take control of your dog. Now, on the recipient's perspective, it, let's say it's not your dog, like Stephanie she is concerned. She's worried about walk, walking her dog. I understand that, and I share that same concern. Whenever I have my dog in public, I share that same concern. To the point, to the point where, when I would go for walks with my dogs, okay. Now I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty happy, pretty content, and pretty blessed with what I have right now. I have uh, uh five acres, and um. I mean, that, that's plenty and plenty of property for our dogs. They get to walk around, sniff. They get to run, sprint when we go out. You know, I don't have them loose the entire time unsupervised. That, that would be irresponsible, in my opinion, for me at least. But we do go out and we do let them run. Uh, they have their time where they get to be dogs around the property. We, we all go for walks. And uh, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty blessed that I have that. But when I didn't have that, and I would take my dogs for walks, what I would do is fly, straight up, I would just I would bring a um, a dowel with me, like a healing stick. And it wasn't for my dog. I was prepared. 
I was prepared to drop the hammer on anything that would charge my dog. That was the mentality I had. Like I, I knew, okay, the stick was not going to be for my dog. That stick was going to be for instances, in, which, by the way, never happened. Okay, I was lucky enough that, that this never happened. But I remember I, I've lived in areas where I would walk my dogs. And periodically, every now and then, as we're driving right through the neighborhood and stuff, I remember seeing loose dogs. I remember thinking, crap, like, I mean, what if I, what if I was walking my dog right now and this loose dog just, just happens to be, I don't know what kind of dog it is. I don't know if it's friendly with dogs or not. So for that reason, when I would walk my dog, and that's what I would suggest to Stephanie and anybody else that might find themselves in a similar situation where you're, you're nervous, you're like, crap, I don't know, that could be a loose dog. I mean, I, I even do it, honestly, I even do it here with the with the five acres that I have. Yeah, the property is fenced in. We do have a gate that is closed. We have two gates. One gate is closed the entire time. It's always closed. The other gate is the main gate that we use. And I have in the past, okay, like maybe a year and a half ago, our neighbor's dog got in our yard because the gate was open. So I even know that that is still even a possibility. Not to mention we also have wildlife. I mean, every now and then we'll have, uh, you know, uh, turkeys. I've seen, I've seen uh, um, fox. I hear coyotes sometimes very, very close to the property. Uh, there are there uh, there are uh, wild hogs around the area i've seen wild hogs as roadkill just i get completely i've gotten killed and annihilated by uh by uh by a truck or something i've i've seen wild boars or or hogs just on the side of the road there. and i've seen them on other people's properties too and like um i think like five months ago or so our neighbor is our neighbor has a huge ranch so we don't have like uh you know Again, be, going back to how blessed I, we are, uh, we just have like vacant property all around our property. So the the property next to us and behind us, actually, is not really vacant. It's a it's a ranch. So a rancher owns that entire piece of land. So um, you know we have a nice nice view, and we have the cows as neighbors. But one time, about five months ago or so, our neighbors' cows got loose, and we had a huge freaking cow in our on our front yard. <laughs> so what I'm getting at is even in our property, I, it's still in the back of my mind, okay? There could be a loose dog at any point, okay? Because I'm outside of city limits and uh, I do see loose dogs sometimes around the around the town. Even though I'm not walking my dogs on, on, in the town, uh, I do have... Uh, you know, a gate that it that is open quite a bit. And so it already happened once. I had a neighbor's dog got into our front yard. So what I'm getting at is it's still in the back of my mind. I know that they could, we could still be running into something when we go for these walks. So I still walk around with a stick. When we go for walks, running around, right? I still bring a stick with me. And... When I didn't have this, when I had, when I was living in a more urban area, and I was walking my dogs in, and I had the the Malinois that that I would walk, the Chihuahua, my twelve year old dog. Well, at the time, he wasn't twelve, um, and so the thought of at any moment I might find a loose dog was there. So I just instead of worrying about it and go, oh, maybe I'm not gonna go. I'm like, I'm gonna go, but I'm gonna bring a stick with me. Okay, it's gonna be a, a an oak dowel and i will drop the I, I won't hesitate okay i like dogs i clearly like dogs i've dedicated you know 12 years of my life to the two dogs to the study of dogs learning about them right I, I mean i've invested a lot of my life 12 years of my life into dogs so i like dogs but I like my dogs better than anybody else's dogs. 
So if I see a loose dog charging again, I haven't seen it, I haven't run into it, but if I ever have a dog charging at my dog um, and, and, and I'm right there, I'm not going to let anything happen to my dog. If, if that's why if I do go for walks and even if uh, even around the property, I have a stick. And if I have, you know, that was my thought process. I'm going to take my dogs for a walk. They're going to go for a walk. But if I see a loose dog, that loose dog better keep walking and minding his own business. Because the second this dog starts charging at me, it's going to get a freaking smacking right on the snout or wherever, whatever it takes to keep his teeth away from my dog. I am willing to do that because, again, I like my dogs better than anybody else's dogs. So, Stephanie, that's what I would do. Okay? That's what I would do. I mean, it's my dog. So, uh, I'm going to do everything I can. Even if even if the owner was watching, I'd still smack the dog. So, yeah. That's just how I would take it. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm not saying that it's easy to do to think about that. But again, I've never had to I've never had to use that stick. <laughs> but I'm willing to. Okay, one time um I was at, at the uh, the school I work at and uh my dog was just kind of I was doing a training session with him. We're doing a little bit of a distance and a student's dog got loose from her. And it charged at my dog, my Malinois. So fortunately, obedience came through because I told my dog down. He down instantly. And this dog, once it got to my dog, my dog's on a down. And my dog's just staring at me. And this student's dog just was like, well, crap, you're laying down. What fun is this? And that gave the student enough time to grab her dog. And my dog did so well. It was the very first time that I had experienced something like that with with uh, with Russ, my Malinois, at that time. And I was like, so when I told he, we were at a distance, so it was not like I was right there. We we're doing some exercises, and the student's dog got loose, charged at my dog. I didn't have enough time to run to my dog, so I put my dog on a down, and um, I was pleasantly surprised. I shouldn't have been because I have pretty good faith in my dog's obedience but um i was pleasantly surprised right it was like oh my god he down perfect and nothing bad happened but when we're just going for walks i'm gonna have a stick with me if i'm if i'm walking in an urban area especially where you know loose dogs tend to um walk around bring a stick with you i know that sounds terrible guys like I've told you before, like I said on the, you know, like I always say on the on the Facebook page, this channel is not for everybody. Uh, some of you guys might find this stuff very, very offensive. And the truth of the matter is, I don't care. You could just not listen, and I'm fine with it. But yes, you need to like your dog better than everybody else's dogs. Now, some people don't carry a stick. I mean, it it looks pretty aggressive. It looks pretty intense when you're walking around with a stick. And yes, people might look at you like, why the hell is he carrying a stick? Now, personally, I don't care. But some people are very sensitive to that. So you can buy um, like a, a compressed air uh, like tire pump. My, my buddy uh, Derek does carry one of those or he does have one of those. It's basically a, a, a tire pump for a bicycle. You put a CO2 cartridge, and it just makes a very loud compressed air sound. And that's, you know, the, the, the whole idea with that is to, to, uh, to interrupt and to prevent the charging dog from making contact with you or your dog. I just know it won't be effective on every dog. Like that sound, that tss, I might not be effective on every dog. It might be effective on a lot of on a lot of dogs, but there will be a dog here and there that will not care. Will just charge it because I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen this happen. Not to my dogs, but I've seen it. I've seen it happen. Some dogs are very intense and they don't care. I mean, you can throw them and they they will still keep going. So carry the compressed air. 
definitely much more discreet. Me, if I'm taking my dog on a walk and it's kind of a, a an urban area, you you can bet that you're gonna see me with a with an oak dowel. And it's not a cane. It's not for my dog. It's for your dog. If it decides to charge, if it decides to charge at my dog, okay, it's for that loose dog. But anyway, that's pretty much it. You guys make sure you like the Facebook page, Instagram, subscribe to YouTube. Dog training is my passion. Check out my books on Amazon, William Garrido, G A R R I D O, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.